It's been a big week here at the Star in Frisco. We've had football players on the football field. The start of OTAs, and it's the organized team activity known as the Blitz, starting now. Pops out to the right, breaks a tackle. They blitz it. Prescott throws it down the right side for Lamb. To throw, rush, sack by Parsons. Heaves it deep down the left side for Gallup. He's got it. Touchdown. Behind the scenes, what's been going on this past week at the Star in Frisco? And more aptly put, this is the unorganized team <laughs> known as the Blitz. Bill Jones along with Kyle Yeomans. We hope you're having a great holiday weekend. It's been a great week here because we've been able not only to see the players on the field. We had an open media session back on Wednesday. The team has three OTAs under their belts. The locker room is open. We're actually able to go into the locker room and talk to the veteran players as well. It's been a great week here. It really has, and it felt like old times going back to 2019. That was the last time the Cowboys had that kind of availability for media and then also just having everybody back in the building the merging of rookies and the young guys along with these veterans is something that is always entertaining to see and of course Mike McCarthy talked about it earlier in the week you got to eliminate the learning curve heading into training camp in the latter parts of the offseason that's the biggest goal on the table right now speaking of training camp we're now less than two months away from Ooh. the start of training camp in Oxnard California but this is where we're able to see this team that's been put together this offseason on the field. Let's talk about some of your expectations here in OTAs. Let's start on the offensive side of the football, Kyle. What are you expecting to see or what do you want to see out there? Well, I think the biggest thing is not to overreact to anything that necessarily comes out from an OTA practice, even if it is injuries, unless it's a major one. You want to just kind of see this thing through. It's the first practice. It's We're in the middle of May. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers aren't on the schedule until we get into the latter parts of the fall. This is an opportunity to see what foundation is being built for this Cowboys team. You want to look at the timings between Dak Prescott and his wide receivers, also some of his young tight ends. There are a couple injuries at the top of that wide receiver depth chart. C.D. Lamb, of course, right back into action. But underneath him, who steps up and who has that kind of rhythm from a pass catcher standpoint? You also want to look at different size changes, builds, where guys are going to be put. Is Tony Pollard going to play on the outside? He certainly showed a couple of that, or a couple of those reps throughout the OTA practices, but he also was in the backfield quite a bit. Who showed up and, and was showing heavy hands, good footwork from an offensive line standpoint, and a lot of right place, right time for these young guys as well. You want to make sure that these young players know where they need to be, know what they're doing, and can execute throughout the drills that they're put into. And number 73, the first round draft pick, Tyler Smith, working at, uh, at left guard exclusively right now. We'll see on down the road. I think it's a good thing that they're starting him off there at guard. Yeah, and they're starting him off with the second stringers as well. So he's in there, not necessarily with the starters, having to earn his keep. They put Connor McGovern as the starting left guard with that one rotation. No Tyron Smith in the early parts of OTAs, but I really do like the thought process of letting Tyler Smith, though he was a first round pick, and you expect him to be the starter when the season comes around. Let him earn it a little bit. Get in there and have some competition yeah, back and, and forth. And let him get acclimated. He's only 21 years Point. old. It's going to come fast and furious once we get uh, closer to Oxnard. All right, let's turn our attention to the defensive side of the football and so many takeaways last year. Year number two under Dan Quinn. Yeah, and there's things that are going to look different for this defense under Dan Quinn, but there's going to be a lot that looks the same, and that's a good thing because of the way they forced turnovers throughout the season a year ago. You get your first look at Micah Parsons, Jaron Curse, both in action for the first time since their, really, their explosion onto the scene for this defense a year ago. Both look relatively similar. You haven't needed Micah Parsons to put on weight or to lose weight. He's exactly what he looked like a year ago. He's somebody to look forward to. You're looking for some of these rookies to step up and their speed, their get-off at the 
line of scrimmage like Sam Williams. Who's going to stand out from the cornerback spot underneath Trayvon Diggs? Can Kelvin Joseph elevate into a potential starting rotation? Those are a couple big things to look at with this defense. One of the things I wanted to note as Chauncey Golston walked out to practice, he's wearing number 99. I looked at him and said, wow, he put on some weight. Talk to him after it was good weight. 20 pounds plus, and they're making a move to the inside. He'll play a lot of three technique this season as opposed to being an edge rusher, something that Chauncey Golston said he did a lot in high school. Didn't do it at Iowa in the Big Ten in college, but now that he's in the NFL, they're saying, hey, we're going to utilize my arm length and go up against some smaller interior linemen, but that's something that I think you could look for in that rotation of a crowded defensive tackle group. Don't you think most players look bigger when they wear number 99? I, I actually wrote that on my notes. I said it could be the number. If he went from 59 <laughs> right. to 99, it's maybe a look. All right, how about number four, Dak Prescott. He is healthy this offseason, and we take an up-close look and hear from Dak when we come back in a moment. The Blitz is brought to you by AT&T, official sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys and by the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. This segment is brought to you by AT&T, official sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, healthiest I've been in a long, long time, so I'm just blessed uh, to, to start there and to be able to, to come in healthy and just to work on uh, myself and just overall my whole game and not just particularly getting one element of my body healthy and just um, just being all out there and not having any restrictions or held back from being in engaged in the team activities and just uh, it's exciting and having the offseason program back obviously um, being held with COVID the last two years it's it's good get the young guys in early get them started uh, just to get the ball in play and just I'm um, running plays feels great. So how big is it that Dak Prescott is back healthy this year in this offseason with all the injuries he's had to deal with? And even you go back into last year, you know, the Cowboys went five and one the first six weeks of the season. Look at the numbers for Dak those first six weeks of the season with a 73 percent completion rate over 300 yards a game. And then you look after the injury, after missing the Minnesota game, his numbers the, uh, the rest of the way. It's a very nice season for Dak Prescott, but building off it into this year as a healthy player, it is so huge. Kyle Yeomans coming into this offseason, especially working other uh, uh, receivers into the mix here. Yeah, absolutely. You want to see Dak Prescott take that next step forward because he's been hindered from taking that next step the last two seasons because of the injury in 2020 and then multiple injuries throughout 2021. He already looks more healthy than he did last year just in the early looks of training camp his movement his mobility and then you also look at the the zip off of his ball his arm strength he has got a little bit more oomph behind his throws than he did even in the back half of last season he's always going to take care of the football and that's a big thing for this offense nine and one last year where the Cowboys when winning the turnover battle and in the last part of the season weeks 16 through 18 he had 12 touchdowns no interceptions but then you get to that San Francisco game you got a slow start. You threw a pick early, and then from then on out, you were behind the eight ball. I mean, that was a Dallas team that was outgained in the first quarter of that playoff game, 110 yards to just seven. Dak Prescott needs to continue to take care of the football, but get off to quicker starts early on, and I think him being healthy will allow him to do so. And uh, when you look at what he has to work with out here, uh, now this first week of OTAs, James Washington not on the field, uh, Jalen Tolbert, the third-round pick as well, and of course, Michael Gallup coming off the ACL. He does have C. D. Lamb is going to be a prominent <laughs> role, of course, for CD with Amari Cooper now with the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, and this leadership academy or the leadership group rather for Dak Prescott and this entire team already recognize just how much they need CD Lamb to step into that number one role. CD talked about it earlier this week, said that he is embracing that role. Dak Prescott is helping him embrace that role. He said, hey, I'm going to put your locker right next to mine. You're going to come sit next to me. We're going to make sure that we are on the right page at the right time all the way throughout the season, and we're going to make Make sure everyone knows you're the number one receiver. After that, it's a competition. James Washington's looking to try and make the roster. Jalen Tolbert, as a rookie, he's a third round pick. You expect him to come in and play significant snaps and make a significant impact. 
Dak Prescott is where it all starts. You need your quarterback to step up in a year like this where you feel like you're losing production from a pass catcher standpoint. He's going to have to be the one to manufacture that throughout the offseason and, of course, into week one. Yeah, there's that masters in leadership that's coming into play once again this year for Dak Prescott. We've seen it throughout his career. You get that guy, your number one receiver, CD close to you in the locker room, and you can talk with him all season long. It's going to be very interesting to see how things progress with CD and uh, Dak this season. All right, when we come back here on the Blitz, how about we meet some of these rookies who are new to the star in Frisco? This segment was brought to you by AT&T, official sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys. Welcome back to the Blitz, your Dallas Cowboys report, and time to meet some of these rookies here at the Star, and here is Britt Johnson. The boys are officially in town. What's up, Cowboys Nation? It is your girl, Britt Johnson, and I am at the 2022 NFL Rookie Mini Camp, where we're going to do an awesome episode of First and Ten, and I'm going to introduce you guys to some of our newest rookies. Hey, what's up, Cowboy Nation? This is Marquise Bell. I play safety. Tyler Smith, offensive line here. So we could just say it. Oh, now? Yeah. Oh, uh, Devin Harper here, play linebacker. Matt, well, let's go offensive tackle. Hey, wait, okay. What's up, Cowboy? <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Cowboy Nation? Jalen Tolbert, wide receiver. Wayne Thomas here, safety. Dennis Houston here, wide receiver. What's up, Cowboy Nation? This is Sam Williams, uh, defensive end. Your first question, what are you most afraid of? Spiders, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure spiders. Um, I'll say snakes. I don't like flying. I'm terrified of flying. Same. I hate it. I, I think it's because I don't have control over the plane. I don't really know what's going on, but that's one of my biggest fears, like just flying. If you had a superpower, what would it be? And give an example of how it could help you on the football field. Uh, being able to be invisible. I could disappear and appear in the end zone, and that could throw me a touchdown. Uh, I would love to be able to read people's minds, especially the quarterback's line. Just see what he's trying to throw, throw the ball at. That's a good one. That's a good one. Favorite Cowboys player of all time? Favorite Cowboys player of all time? Probably go Larry Allen. I don't lie. Or Larry Allen. That's a, that's a go candidate. Premium go candidate right there. Emmitt Smith. Good one. All time. I say prime. You gotta, you gotta love prime time, right? <laughs> what would I find in your refrigerator right now? Ooh, that's a good question. Probably some steak and some chicken. Water. That's all. Literally, that's all. Water. That's it. That's it. Okay, we need to get this boy fed and... <laughs> I eat what I eat out. I eat out. Okay. You have a new teammate whose name is Osa Odigizua. Spell his last name for me. You can say it again real quick. Odigizua. Odigizua. Uh, I would say O D Z. E. O D. O D. I forgot where I was. Oh, Diggy Zua. Yeah. Oh, I probably missed an E between the D and the e Z. Okay. That's how many letters is it? Diggy Zua. D. G. U. Diggy Zua. S. No. S. A D A <laughs> O D E. I'm already wrong. G Z A U G W. There it is, man. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. You got the most letters correct than anybody that's done this, okay. so that's pretty good. <laughs> All right, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of First and Ten. I hope you guys got to know a little bit more about our newest rookies. Make sure you guys share this with your friends, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks, Britt. And Odigazua is actually spelled O-S-A. Just call him Osa. The Blitz continues in a moment. We take a look at the tight end position, the battle behind Dalton Schultz. Where does Jake Ferguson fit in? McCarthy, that was pretty soon when, when I came here. Um, the tight end position in this offense is invaluable. Um, again, you're asked to do a lot, like a lot, a lot. There's a lot put on your plate. Um, you have to understand everything about protections to um, running back tracks to blocking assignments, obviously, passing concepts, yes. 
Um, but then tight ends, I mean, obviously are very involved in special teams too. So like that's another part, especially if you're a young guy, like special teams is kind of like your your thing. So um, there's a lot and there's a, a good tight end is obviously invaluable, especially in offenses like this. There he is. He's your franchise player playing on the tag. Ten point nine million dollars in his fifth season. Dalton Schultz out of Stanford. You got the rookie Jake Ferguson. Jeremy Sprinkle back for another season with the Cowboys. Sean McEwen, Ian Bunting, Peyton Hendershot, rookie free agent there at the bottom of your screen there as we welcome you back here to uh, the Blitz. And uh, the priority of the tight end position's always been big in this offense. Yeah, it absolutely has. And you saw that last year with, with Dalton Schultz and the way that he took over that number one role in 2020 with the injury of Blake Jarwin. And then he established himself as the franchise tag sort of player that he is in 2021. Now the future of this tight end position is in flux. If they don't get a deal done with Dalton Schultz long term, they are looking at some of these younger guys to, to find a rhythm. But Dalton Schultz is by far and away here in 2022 the number one tight end in this offense. He's a reliable target for Dak Prescott. He is a priority for this offense, and they showed you that by going out and tagging him. They wouldn't have wasted their time going out and, and making that move if they didn't see him as a priority and somebody who helps their quarterback out tremendously. And uh, of course, the, the focus on Dalton Schultz and the number of catches he will have, but the, the two tight end sets are very important uh, in this offense. And so it's going to be very interesting, the training camp battle for the backup tight end position. We'll call it backup, but that second tight end starts a number of games for this team. Yeah, and one of the guys that you can maybe see that elevates into that second tight end role at some point throughout the season is Jake Ferguson, the rookie that's been drafted out of Wisconsin. He was a fourth round pick, somebody that they had targeted as a guy to fill in underneath Dalton Schultz, very Dalton Schultz-esque in the fact that he does have an all around aspect to his game, but much like Schultz, he was a good receiver, not as much of a good blocker. I mean, Dalton Schultz last year was a top 10 receiving tight end. You could argue he wasn't a top 20 blocking tight end. So that's where Jake Ferguson needs to fill his role. He needs to come in and be physical, basically, alongside Dalton Schultz, be a blocking tight end, somebody that you can rely on in the run game, rely on in potential pass sets and to pass some guys off. But overall, he will bring you a receiving aspect. Can he bring the blocking ability? That's how he gets on the field as a rookie. Well, and, and you it was a priority in the draft for the Cowboys to come up with a tight end. We'll see how quickly Jake Ferguson develops, but let's all keep in mind Dalton Schultz was a fourth round draft pick just like Jake Ferguson uh, and you had other tight ends playing ahead of him and he earned his playing time. So it's going to be interesting to see the progress of Ferguson. Here. That's the biggest thing is he will be a part of that competition with three or four other guys for that second or third tight end role. You look at Sean McCune. He's going into his third season. What kind of step will he take? Jeremy Sprinkle is the veteran of the group in his sixth season as a tight end in the NFL. He's drafted by Washington, showed up last year, came in on blocking situations, but still very limited playing time. And then it's an uphill battle for Ian Bunting in his second year, Peyton Hendershot as a rookie. It's Ferguson, Sprinkle, McCune, really, for me, as that tech second tight end, third tight end competition. The Cowboys carried four a year ago. Could they all see playing time? Absolutely. But you want Ferguson to take that step forward. If not, Sprinkle and McCune are going to have to do so, and they've already been in the league for a couple of years. It definitely seems like it would be tougher for them to take that step. All right, the focus, of course, is on football here at the Star in Frisco. But uh, there's another sport that's on the minds of some of these players. We wrap up the Blitz here in just a moment. The Blitz was brought to you by AT&T, official sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys and by the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. Final couple of minutes here of the Blitz. And yes, we talk football on the Blitz, but this is the annual rite of spring or summer here. It's the Reliant Home Run Derby and a special feature this year at Riders Field in Frisco, home of the Rough Riders. Kyle Yeomans will be emceeing this year's event on Tuesday, <laughs> June 7th. I'm so looking forward to this whole event. It is in uh, in partnership with the Salvation Army. Lots and lots of charity will be given out throughout the process. And well, lots and lots of, of homers, too. Beautiful ballpark. It's free admission. You don't need tickets. 
bring the entire family out because it's a fun night of entertainment. I may even get to swing the bat a little bit. I'm going to try. I, I don't know if they'll let oh. me, unfortunately. I'm not as big time as Bill Jones. But if, if Bill went up and said, hey, I want to swing, they would do it. <laughs> I'm still trying to talk them into it. However, I will be out there. and We're going to have a lot of fun throughout the night. You confidently said there would be lots and lots of home runs. That must sure. be. You've been in the cage yourself. <laughs> I didn't say they were coming from me. <laughs> I'm saying they're coming from the professional athletes that are picking up a bat and All swinging. Right. That does it for the Blitz for this week. And we will see you again next week with the second week of OTAs or organized team activities.